road usage charge, woohoo, potholes, tax potholes ahead for drivers. Here on Talking Tax with Tom Yamachika. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. What's going on here? I'm a little worried that, um, you know, um, we have all this tax about driving. And well, we're looking at a war that's going to be waged in the next legislature, maybe. And the war is going to be between a road usage charge and a carbon tax. And we're, we're going to talk about both of those. Well, theoretically, A, they, they both get paid by the drivers, I suppose. And B, um, they're, and I'm asking this more as a question than a statement. And B, um, they're pointed in the same direction at trying to improve the environment. Or is that not so? That's, Which that's, one, that's not so. Okay, help um, me, help me. Okay, so let's let's kind of go through uh, what the war is going to be about. Um, right now, as you as you may recall, we have a fuel tax that uh, goes into uh, the state's coffers for the highway fund when whenever we you know go to the gas station and fill up at the pump. I think it's like sixteen cents a gallon uh, is is what the state charges. Now that's separate from the GET, which is another. Uh, which is another charge on the fuel and and the county fuel tax, which is separate, and that goes I think you know tw uh, between eighteen and twenty three cents goes to the counties for whatever they are using to improve county roads. Um, they they go into the various county highway funds. And there's federal tax too, right? Yes, there's there's some federal taxes as well that goes into uh, you know generalized support, and that's. And, and they usually match uh, to some degree what we spend on our highways. So, so the feds then kick in some. And, and uh, we've, we've seen that in um, you know, the, the dialogues for our Honolulu Rail project. Uh, we've asked the feds to come in with some matching monies and, 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 they, and they are kind of um, exercising their oversight about the project and saying, well, we're not going to give you the money unless you Come up with a you know reasonable recovery plan, um, and you know stuff like that. What does recovery but, mean? Uh, a re recovery in the sense of the financial plan that the uh, city of Honolulu has submitted so far ain't cutting it. So, come up with something that looks that looks more realistic. You pay the expenses, repay yeah. repay the government. Um, recovery for what? Well, you know, uh, not only does a, uh, a transportation system take money to build, but you also have to maintain it. So you have to take a look at you know, what's going to come in, what's going to go out. Uh, yes, it's going to be subsidized, but the question is to what degree. But, that, but, but we digress. Yes, we digress. So the question is really, the larger question is, is war. Um, so who's on what side of the war and why? Okay, so our Department of Transportation is uh, and has for the past several years been studying implementation of a road usage charge, uh, primarily based on what's new, what New Zealand has now. That charge would be assessed to a driver based on how many miles they've driven on our highways and byways, and it's at least in theory designed to replace the fuel tax that is now the primary contributor to the state's highway fund. Now, the, the, the Department of Transportation is concerned because uh, we have uh, you know, many, many more alternative fuel vehicles on the highway now. We have your, your electric vehicles, uh, we have hydrogen vehicles, uh, we have hybrids, we have other things, but they are not paying as much into the fuel tax uh, as, as a gasoline car would, obviously. So, so they're concerned that their funding source is drying up and they want to you know, try to find something that, at least in their mind, is more fair. So you, know, you could make what... the argument that for, say, electric vehicles, um, not to charge them a gasoline fuel tax is actually an, an incentive um, to have more people buy electric vehicles. Has that been considered? Of course it's been considered, but... 
But the Department of Transportation is saying, we're running out of money. And we have to figure out some way to keep our, our highway fund sustainable. Can I, can I just interrupt with a thread that I'm probably going to mention more than once in this show? But why do we have to have these little pockets of tax? Uh, if the government, if the Department of Transportation needs money, let's give them money out of a carefully, you know, organized budget uh, out of the general fund. Why do we have these little pockets? You know, this is like special funds. Uh, why do we? Why do we have to match? the needs of the Department of Transportation um, with a specific tax on a specific thing. That just seems to me really archaic and inefficient. Um, it, also complies with, it also complies with federal requirements. Federal requirements require them to have a highway tax? To have a highway fund, yes. I mean, was it, was it gonna uh, feed it with a tax? Uh, yeah, but the highway fund can come out of the general fund, right? In theory, yes. I don't understand why we we have you know all this baggage about these little funds here, these little funds there, and raising it or not raising it. And oh, it just be, seems like because, a, a because lot of the government can make more money that way. Well, there you got it. That's it. I mean, I think it's a thread for me in all of this. I I probably will mention it to you again. I'm, I'm sure you will. So, but 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 the Department of Transportation has been busy selling uh, Hawaii taxpayers on its plan. And, um, you know, they, they've been come out, coming out with, you know, publicity campaigns supporting this Hoya Road usage charge, saying it's fairer. Uh, it is um, uh, based on everybody's usage of the highways and byways and, and you know, pays for the damage that these, uh, you know, these car, uh, cars and other vehicles cause to our road, roads and bridges. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, they say, uh, what is causing or what is, what is, powering the vehicle the fact is the vehicle is on the on the road uh, the, the fact that the vehicle is on the road causes wear and damage and that needs to be paid for in in terms of annual maintenance uh but you know if you if you have um, a, a tax based on uh how many miles i travel uh, rather than how much fuel i put in the car um then uh, there has to be a huge logistical technical issue. How do you determine how many miles I travel? I'm oh, that's actually a, that's actually yeah. very easy because every year uh, you go in and uh, do a, a vehicle safety inspection, and they take down your mileage at that time. Oh. So we, that's that's one thing we have in our state, right? The annual vehicle safety inspection. So so you go in and and you, and you get a little sticker to, to put to put on your bumper, and at that time. You know your 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 cheerful mechanic takes down your mileage, and that will then go to the Department of Transportation, and they will compute your bill. Mm. Okay. okay, at least at least under one scenario. So they don't have to install new equipment. They don't have to um, do sensors or anything on the highways. They just take it off the inspection. That's that's one way. Obviously, uh, there are some people who would rather have uh, you know more intrusive means like. Uh, uh, you know, an app da collecting data or uh, a device in the car, which is kind of more like Big Brother, but you know, th those are other options. Well, a huge expense. Can you imagine putting a device in every car on the highway? Wow. Yep. Um, and and the department said, you know, in a recent report uh, that they've surveyed the public on uh, this road usage charge, and 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 they they found. Uh, that Hawaii has Hawaii drivers have a high level of understanding uh, and high initial acceptance of road usage charges, with uh, more support than opposition. Noting, of course, that uh, they're presupposing that the RUC will replace and not be in addition to the current gas tax. Okay, and it's 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 being sold as a revenue neutral alternative. You you make you make but but the way you put it it sounded like it, that was not a guarantee at all that we might have both. You know, in the legislature, anything can happen. <laughs> you know that, and I know that. So so and and uh, again, this is one of two warring proposals that the legislature will be considering in the coming session. The second one is the carbon tax. 
carbon tax um, collects money to pay for the societal costs of pollution, global warming, and other environmental damage wrought by fossil fuel burning. Okay. Now, this one is not going to be revenue neutral. Why? Because given that many of the environmental damages in our state have already occurred, the goal of the tax is not only to compensate for current social costs, but to fix the past damage. So, uh, and, and it is also there as a social policy measure to penalize the use of fossil fuels. So rather than getting rid of the existing tax on gasoline, they want to jack it up big time. And by big time, let me give you some numbers. This past session, there was a bill called House Bill 2278. It proposed to change the barrel tax on gasoline. That's, that's what it would replace. Right now, the barrel tax, and you've heard me say this before, it started off as a nickel. It's now $1.05 per barrel of gasoline, and barrel being 42 gallons of gas. Okay. House Bill 2278 would would have would raise the dollar five to five twenty seven initially, so it's five x initially, and it's going to phase in, and when fully phased in, would be thirty three dollars and sixteen cents per barrel. That translates to twelve and a half cents a gallon initially. Replacing the, I think the two and a half cents uh, that the barrel tax accounts for today. How many how many gallons in a in a barrel? Forty two. And seventy nine cents a gallon when fully phased in. That's that that's that's big money. And is is there any talk about whether that would be on top of of the other taxes that you're talking about? Not yet. Uh, so far, uh, both proposals in, in, in the past legislative session went through a separate bills. They both died. So, so nobody, nobody thought of you know, layering them on top of each other. But it's possible that in a future legislative session, maybe the one coming up, that both would pass. Then what do you do? So how, how exactly does the carbon tax work. I mean, I've heard the case made that, um, you know, this oil in everything, you know, a good example or a strange example would be furniture. You know, import furniture, there's oil all over the furniture, the, the manufacturer of the furniture, the finish on the furniture and so forth. Uh, how do you, well, how do that, you that, deal that with that? Well, uh, the carbon tax as proposed wouldn't have. It, it's only imposed on the importation into the state of fossil fuels. Mm. So there's a there's a schedule of substances, and a tax rate for each, uh, basically corresponding to the amount of carbon dioxide that it would release into the atmosphere upon burning. You know, one of the one of the questions that come to mind. You you're always so provocative, and questions come to mind. Is that okay? So now you raise it to you know some extraordinary amount of money. Uh, for a barrel of uh, oil. Um, exactly what are you going to do with that money? Because uh, what's happened with the barrel tax so far is the barrel tax has been, you know, everybody's mm, source of funds. I mean, everybody picks at it politically every year, try to get a bigger piece of it. It's not clear that the way it's distributed around to government agencies and, and missions um, is rational or useful or what was intended. Um, now, you know, we have this dramatic possibility of a lot more money coming out of the sale of a barrel of oil. Um, but where, where does it go? Who decides? And is that locked, you know, is that, is that locked in, in, in amber? Or, or is it going to change every year the way the barrel tax has changed, the existing barrel tax? Well, it, like any other tax, would be in law. Legislatures meet every year, meet, and and legislatures can and, and do change laws. Well, so, what I mean, what you know, so you say it's a it's a carbon tax. That's nice, and it's supposed to 
you know, disincentivize uh, the importation of carbon. Okay, so let me let me answer then your main question, and that is, what would be done with the money now? Uh, our tax review commission, uh, which has been one of the entities proposing that idea, has said, well, you know, we we want to enact this as a disincentivization of fossil fuel use, but we really don't want this to be a revenue raiser so much. So our recommendation is that eighty percent be rebated to the taxpayers. How, how that would work, they didn't specify. Why, why do that? Why tax and then, and then rebate? <laughs> That's what the lawmakers are going to be asking. They're, they're, going to, they're going to say, why don't we just keep the money? What's the point? You know, you know what happens, though? I mean, it just, let me throw this at you. Okay, tax and rebate, real nice. What a wonderful thing. Everybody loves to get a rebate after they pay the tax. Um, but then in year number two or three, the rebate goes away. Isn't that what would happen? There's certainly, certainly, a a danger of that happening. Now, I mean, you 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 take a look at what's happened in our state constitution in in seventy eight or so. Uh, we passed a constitutional amendment that said, "Look, if our general fund balance goes over a certain amount in for two years in a row, then we need to uh, rebate the money to taxpayers." Okay, and law shall be passed to do that. So yeah, in the first year, I think they read it like maybe a hundred bucks. Then they changed it to a dollar. And the next year was a dollar. And the, and the year after that was a dollar. And the year after that was a dollar. <laughs> you see, you see a pattern emerging here. Yes, it doesn't take too long. Well, let me go back to my theme. I, I you know, we're behind in paying our bills. Our um, our roads are not up to snuff. We haven't been taking care of the social safety net. Uh, we haven't been taking care of the environment. I could go on. Um, the, the state is uh, falling into a, what do you want to call it, a fiscal backwater. Um, and yet, um, you know, here we are working on one thing at a time without really, um, you know, developing a policy and a plan. And uh, it just strikes me strange. Why? You know, if you need the money, raise the taxes and then have some smart group decide where it goes. Really smart group instead of throwing it away or worse, rebating it. Uh, it. It just seems to me this is all, may I say, chaotic? Uh, I think you you can, yeah. <laughs> I won't stop you from using it on the show. <laughs> But I mean, we're not paying our bills. I don't understand why we're not paying our bills. If we need the money to pay our bills, let's raise the money. Of course, one way to raise the money, and I don't want to go too far off base here, but one way, way to raise the money is incentivize the improvement and development and expansion of our economy. Um, but I don't think we're doing a whole lot on that. If we did that, we'd have a bigger tax base, right? And we would you know, collect tax without increasing rates or doing fancy uh, fancy funds, um, but well, we don't, the, we the, don't, the fact we of the don't matter really do that. The fact of the matter is, uh, we have a tax environment right now uh, that is conducive to losing people. People exactly. are people are buying one way tickets to the mainland, and they're getting the heck out. Okay, uh, we've seen this uh, proved time and time again. The most recent proof is from our own Department of Education, but that's that's another story. Uh, they, have, they have found that they're losing students and they're losing students because their families are moving to the mainland, more than half. Wow. Uh, of, of the students who are going away are going away because their families are moving to the mainland. Wow. Well, okay, this, that's the thread, I suppose. Let's go back to the war. Um, so, okay, the Department of uh, Transportation wants to have this uh, uh, mileage use, usage tax, which sounds very clever, I suppose, to fill their, their fund and, uh, I guess, satisfy the Fed that they have an, an adequate amount of money in there for road maintenance and the like. Um, but who's on the other side of that? Who, who would oppose that? Well, you know, the carbon tax folks... Um, they are, like I said, premised on 
on on on it not being revenue neutral. They want to penalize. Who, they're, they're environmentalists. Is that what it is? Yeah, environmentalists and others. They want they want to penalize fossil fuel use. So um, they will not be satisfied with a carbon tax that's revenue neutral. Okay, now uh, somebody apparently. I mean, I I, I don't know. Uh, for sure, but somebody is going to ask the question. Well, can't can't we do both? <laughs> I'm sorry you said that. <laughs> Don't spread I'm sorry the word. I said that. <laughs> which is which is why I'm very very nervous that you know these uh, competing plans, the road usage charge and the carbon tax, are are going to be put together and morph into something entirely more gruesome. During this upcoming legislative session, uh, that's carbon my fear. tax for a moment. Carbon tax. What what is the the profile, if you will, of uh, carbon tax on the mainland and elsewhere outside the country? You know, we've been hearing about it for a long, long time, um, but it hasn't really come to our shores, except you know, in, in aspirational ways. Uh, yeah, I, I don't what, think what any about state, other states. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think any other state has adopted one yet. I think uh, a couple of cities have. I think a city in Colorado, uh, maybe Washington State, but uh, nothing, no, nothing on a statewide basis yet. Uh, has any city been successful? I mean, what, has it run into snags on the city level? I, I'm not sure what you would call snags, but uh, you know, even the fact that 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 no other states adopted it yet has has not been a a reason reason to dissuade anybody who is pushing forth on the carbon tax they're, they're saying yeah we got to be a nation the nation's leader in this we have to we have to show you know we have to show those other you know lowly states uh how environmental protection is truly done yeah is it is this reflect does the carbon tax reflect the way environmental protection should truly be done i go back to my theme if you need to do something for the environment you know make a policy um increase the taxes across the board and implement the policy. Why does it have to be, you know, linked this way? Well, we we got we got two out of three. We made the policy. We're gonna we're gonna be um uh green by twenty forty five. We're uh proposing the tax and then implementation well that's that's a whole nother story. <laughs> it well, you know, a... I mean, there's so many ways to skin the cat that seem easier. For example, um, we had a speaker, Vice President of General Motors, a few days ago, and he said General Motors is not going to be selling fossil fuel cars after I forget what year, but it's coming soon. Um, and if you and uh, isn't it California is saying after a certain year you can't you can't buy fossil fuel cars. You can use them. But you can't buy them. Um, and right. So why, why don't we just do that? That seems so elegantly simple. Well, then our highway fund will run out because our highway fund is premised on fuel tax, mm -hmm. and, and we and we and the highway fund won't have money to uh, you fix the roads and bridges. Why is the Fed requiring this anyway? I guess what it's saying. I'm, I'm guessing here. What it's saying is, uh, if we don't have a requirement that the highway fund be funded, then there'll be communities and states around the country that won't put money into highway maintenance, and our roads will deteriorate. Footnote, they're already deteriorating, but hey, that's another issue. And, and what did Joe Biden do in the infrastructure bill um, to you know, improve highway maintenance around the country? Do we have multiple ways to do it? Is this the only way? And is this good federal policy? Well, you, you can debate federal policy. Uh, I mean, the, the the feds, of course, can decide what to do about their own roads, like, you know, H1 and, and so forth. Um, but most of the roads are owned by the state and counties. That's so odd, really. I mean, it's so odd to have a federal highway in the state that doesn't connect with any other state. But aside from that, it's so odd to have city roads and state roads and federal roads 
all subject to different policies, funding, and uh, maintenance schemes. Uh, it's, well, that's, it's, true all, it's, that's true all across the country. I, I'm not saying it's good anywhere else either. <laughs> we need better roads. We need electric cars, period. We do. So, so, somebody should get out and do that. Did, did Joe Biden's infrastructure bill a few weeks ago, did that deal with this? And what was the mechanism? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, okay. So the environmentalists uh, on their own motion uh, want this um, carbon tax. And, and we would be uh, really pushing you know, the, the edge on it because it hasn't been done. What are the risks of adopting um, carbon tax such as the one uh, proposed? Well, um, there are a couple of places that the carbon tax would hit very, very heavily. One is on uh, electricity generation, right? We now burn bunker, bunker fuel to make electricity. Second is uh, the commercial use of transportation, right? Um, we, we, we truck goods and services from place to place. That's how we get them into our stores. That's, and, that's, and that's how we can, you know, go, go buy the things that we need, you know, the food that we eat, uh, you know, the equipment and, and utilities that we've got. You know, they, they all come to us by way of road transportation. So if you jack up the cost of the road transportation in whatever form, it's going to bubble up into the cost, into the price of goods and services, and i.e., our cost of living, and our cost of living is sky high already. Yeah, those, those charges, those additional taxes, will be passed on to customers. You can you can bet on that. There's no <laughs> there's no ambiguity there. They will be passed on, and everybody. Um, and, and I have to say that in that sense, it becomes regressive, sort of like a of the gross excise that we've talked about. Everybody, including people who are less able to afford the additional tax, will have to pay for it. You go some, buy something in a store, it's going to be more expensive because the, the shipper, um, the liverer, uh, has to pay the carbon tax. Um, it would, isn't it easier just to you know, increase the income, income tax, for example? And... and, and um, uh, you know, the okay, let's talk about the, the disincentive aspect. So if I tax the use of carbon, is that going to have a significant effect on the use of carbon? Well, there are studies that say it does. We, 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 we haven't really tried it here. We have, you know, high gas prices, but people still use, still use cars. So, you know, I think the jury's out on that. That's true. I'm not going to change my driving habits. Are you? Uh, maybe you're an electric car guy, but I'm not going to change my fossil fuel driving habits. I'm just going to pay the tax. Yeah, I, I have I have a hybrid, and it, it helps a little bit, but I, I, I still I still shed a tear every time I go to the filling station. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty bucks! Oh my god! And, well, and, this, is, and this is peanuts compared to. What will happen? Trucking yeah. company, hmm. for example. <laughs> so how does this all settle down? You know, it, it seems there, may I say, there's too many things on the table. Um, and again, and you and I have discussed this many times. Again, you know, there's a kind of a vacuum of leadership where somebody should come up and say, look, this is what we should do. This is my gubernatorial initiative. This is what I'm asking the legislature to pass. Here's my program. I don't, I don't hear the sound of that. But if um, if there was a sound, what would it be like to rationalize this, to simplify it, um, to get the job done somehow without punishing us for what happened in the past? I don't see that as a legitimate purpose for taxation. That's just me. Um, I, I see, you know, trying to incentivize and disincentivize public behavior in the future, but not in the past. I'm not punitive. So... What's what's a good policy here, Tom? Well, um, 
there are different schools of thought on that, as you as you know. I mean, there's the there's the free market school of thought, to to the effect that uh, you know, just just uh, you know lay off the heavy hand of government and, and the and the market will fix itself uh, through the principles of economics. Um, the roads won't fix themselves. Yeah, the roads won't fix themselves though. So that has limited applicability here because because the government is definitely fixing the roads so uh but you know i mean certainly there are there are economic aspects that is like if if the taxes are less then supposedly the road repairs would cost less because the you know, the people repairing them are not are not you know pinched as hard as they were before right so th there there are you know two ways the uh, you know, uh, the effects of greater or lesser tax can can trickle up or trickle down. So I make a pre make a prediction. I say the carbon tax is not going to get passed right now. Um, you know, the, the 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 forces at play in terms of lobbying and all that are um, the environmental lobby is just not as strong to do that. And and with, without having precedent on the mainland, without having a a clear path, a clear statement of benefit. And it'll be hard to get that thing passed. On the other hand, the Department of Transportation presumably would have the support of other agencies and the governor. Um, they need the money for the roads. People want the roads. There's a lot of reasons to, um, you know, fix the roads. Um, it, it it seems. It seems fair to charge everyone for their use of the roads, whatever fuel. Although my argument about uh, how the, you know a use tax would, I mean, a use of the roads tax would um, incentivize electric vehicles. I think there's other ways to incentivize them, like a tax credit. Uh, and if the feds are going to do a tax credit, and they are doing a tax credit, that'll be enough, kind of thing. So therefore, yes. I think the likelihood is that the Department of Transportation will get what it wants. No? Yeah, well, um, I think you know if you if you handicap the war right now, that's probably how it would. Uh, I mean, I, I I kind of agree with uh, with the chances, but you never know, right? I mean, you never know what happens in the legislature. People may think that a compromise would be passing both and. And in implementing both, because I mean, right right now the measures don't don't conflict, right? Uh, the the um, road usage charge affects one part of the fuel tax, and uh, and and the carbon tax affects another part. Mm. Mm. Bicycles. <laughs> yeah, let's get our bicycles. <laughs> So are taxes going to go up in the next session in general? I mean, are we, are we looking into the maw of increase in taxes, not only in road usage and barrel tax and, um, and possibility of carbon tax, but in, in, in rates, income tax rates or increases in, huh, God forbid, in the in increases in the general excise tax. Um, are we looking at, do, do we have a fiscal problem that requires us to increase the taxes next year. Uh, we have a fiscal problem, but I think it's on the spending side and not the uh, and not the tax side. I mean, well, you just we, talked about the shrinking of the tax base. That all by itself, assuming constant spending, assuming no issues in spending, and, and that's a big assumption, of course. Um, but if our tax base is being reduced, if people are leaving. Um, then you know we do, we don't have the same economies of scale, and we have um, smaller receipts in taxes. That's where it's going, isn't it? And if that's happening, and this is a horrible result, uh, then you've got to make up for the shortfall by increasing taxes, the rates, or by or by uh, decreasing the size of government because there are fewer people here to service. Yeah, I suppose so. If kids are leaving school, for example, you still have a lot of, what do you want to call it, base, base services that have to be provided for education. Um, it's not like you're going to save a lot of money by terminating a lot of teachers. Um, they still have to be there. 
the school school building must still be there. Um, so I think even if a huge number of kids leave the schools, we still have a big education bill anyway. Yeah, but it'll be harder to justify three deputy superintendents. <laughs> yeah, right. It's all in the administration anyway. That's where the big money is. <clears throat> well, I, you know, I think I think you're right. But take a moment and tell us why you feel um, that the fiscal problem is in the spending. <clears throat> uh, we we've heard you know lots of anecdotal evidence that that there's a lot of inefficiency in government. Um, one of the biggest problems that that we've had is, you know, transparency. Getting to actually see how much is spent on what. Uh, I think once the transparency increases, and and we find out exactly what's you know what's been spent on on what, then uh, the public can can see that oh all of this has been mismanaged and they and they put. Uh, and, and they try to clamp down on it. That's you know what happened in Oha most recently, and and I think uh, Oha is not uh, an island unto itself. I think it's representative of state government. So I think th there are a lot of other big problems to be found, and we just have to kind of increase the transparency, open them up, and root them out. Okay, I wouldn't argue with any of that, but how? How do we? find the uh, you know the the problems and root them out we you and i have talked to the state auditor a few times is is there more than the state auditor how do you do that does the governor get involved in this um do you need to root out you know corruption in the criminal sense um what do we need to do to clean this up and and make state government more efficient well we need to find out what's going on first i mean you you can't really uh, figure out what the solution is if you don't know what the problem is. So we, we have to increase transparency. We have to uh, open these agencies up to uh, disinterested reviews by, you know, watchdogs like uh, our, our, our company, the, the Education Association, uh, the other nonprofits who are, who are there to, you know, uh, keep watch on these, on this, on this government spending. So if I wanted to find out what the Tax Foundation is looking at in terms of transparency and efficiency, where would I go? Uh, well, we have a website, uh, tfhawaii.org, and we get lots of information there. Uh, we have uh, new articles uh, that come out every week uh, and uh, other neat stuff on the tax system and and we have, you know, prior rants and raves by my predecessors uh, who have seen issues like these over the, you know, 60, 70 years we, we've been in operation. Anybody else notable? Any other organizations you'd care to mention? Uh, we have uh, organizations that, that look at fiscal health generally, uh, Grassroot Institute. Uh, we have Appleseed Center. Uh, we have you know a few others that uh, whose names don't come to mind immediately, but they're out there. What about federal organizations? Well, let me let me change that. What about organizations from the mainland, federal and you know NGOs, um, you know who may be interested in making comparisons between states and letting us know how we stand in terms of efficiency as against other states? Well, we have a tax foundation based in Washington. Um, and this one's just called Tax Foundation. Uh, they're, they're not related to us, but they, they do uh, the kind of comparison studies that, you, uh, that you're speaking of. Yeah, I, you know, all that makes me think that uh, this is good and we should encourage those organizations and, and the Tax Foundation to do its work and, and uh, you know, uh, peel away the layers and find transparency and then take take steps to make things more efficient. But on the, on the flip side of the coin, just one min, minute more, um, there are, in, in my view, an increasing number of organizations that lobby in Hawaii. And they're from the mainland. They have their causes. Uh, some of them are mm, more enlightened and others are less enlightened. 
but they come here and they lobby our legislators and they and they seek to have their own agendas um, incorporated in our public policy. Is there anything we can do to make them transparent? Because I think it's it's very troublesome, uh, for example, um, to see uh, lobby organizations from the mainland, from the NRA, come here and uh, in, uh, discourage any gun control. Um, and, I, and I think that's really not a fair representation of how people in Hawaii feel about it. I hope. Well, if, if people in Hawaii have opinions, they should make you know, their opinions known to their legislators. I mean, they elect them. Um, they, they can send you know, texts, phone calls, emails to the legislators. Uh, during session or before. Uh, November is probably going to be a proving ground for a lot of them because we have we have all of our uh, folks in the uh, in this in the big square building in Baratani Street being elected, except for the ones who've already won won in the primaries for lack a lack of opposition. No, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's it's really important in our democracy that we take an active role, we follow the stuff, we learn about all sides of the issue and then we speak out. And um, I'm so glad you're doing what you do, Tom. Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of, of Hawaii, coming around every couple of weeks and telling us about interesting and, and sometimes troublesome issues. I would say often troublesome issues. <laughs> <laughs> that are taking place or could take place in our state government with regard to taxes. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you for having me on the show today. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.